asteroid danger. NASA chief warns of deadly collision, and this is not Hollywood scenario. We've had these types of collisions in the past, like this thing here you just saw. This is asteroid QQ23 that's coming at us. You can see how close the trajectory is. We've been hit quite a few times in the past. That's why next year we aim to be at the uh, asteroid, twin asteroid Didymus. Didymus meaning twin in Greek. The Didy moon is what we're supposed to be targeting in order to significantly push it off its trajectory. This is going to be a type of a real type scenario dry run of what would be taking place in order to mitigate, to stop an asteroid from coming to impact our Earth, in order to perhaps have uh, an extinction level event as has happened many times in the past. So uh, we have even had a few close calls lately. Remember a couple of months ago we had an asteroid that impacted us. Thank goodness it wa we didn't even see that coming. And thank goodness it hit just south of the Aleutian Islands and it impacted into the Pacific Ocean, the North Pacific Ocean, and there was no impact to us, no casualties, no tsunamis, and thank goodness it was in the part of the ocean where it did not affect anyone. Now the NASA chief has been telling us, he has been uh, informing us that uh, this is a real threat to Earth, and this is uh, former Republican Congressman Jim Bridenstine. He especially notified us about the exercise of the asteroid impact they had the end of April. It included various international space agencies, ast um, uh, astronomical agencies, and it was run by NASA. It had a theoretical impact around Delaware, they did try and supposedly nuke the asteroid, but a piece of it was cut off and fell onto New York City. So that was a failure, even though it was a tabletop exercise. They didn't. Um, they didn't succeed. Now this asteroid danger. Top NASA chief issues grave warning of the deadly collision, and this is not Hollywood. He says this by Ger Simram Hans on Express UK. The NASA administrator John Bridenstine gave this warning on the prospect of an asteroid collision. Though it's predicted no collision could occur the next century at least, Bridenstine said there was still a chance. He was nominated to serve as NASA Administrator by Donald Trump. He was previously the committee uh, on the Committee on Science-Based Technology while a Republican congressman in Oklahoma. Mr. Bridenstine said, we have to make sure that people understand that this is not about Hollywood. It's not about the movies. It's about ultimately protecting the only planet we know right now to host life, and that is the planet Earth. Even though Bridenstine lacks formal qualification in science, he was an executive director at the Tulsa Air and Space Museum. He's also served in the U.S. Navy. NASA is in the process of developing the Double Asteroid Redirect Test DART for short. That's the asteroid mission that NASA has in order to try to mitigate, as we said before, an asteroid that would potentially impact Earth. And they're going to, quite soon, do that. So we'll have a lot to look forward to next year when it gets to the moon of the Didymus uh, Twin Asteroid System and tries to push that smaller of the two bodies out of its trajectory. Will it be successful? What will be the result? That's what we're going to look forward to next year. DART will attempt to redirect asteroids away before they can collide with Earth. So they will learn a lot from that, definitely. They will learn a lot from that. The project will hope to use a special spacecraft and launch a test in the summer of 21. It will attempt to knock out one of the Didymus asteroids out of orbit, the smaller one of the two. The project will occur September of 2022. Didymus 
A is a 2,224-foot, that's uh, less than half a mile across, but poses no threat to Earth. This width means it's wider than the Burj Khalifa is tall. Opponents criticized Bridenstine's appointment as the first elected official to become NASA administrator as he was a climate change denier. But the town hall at the agency's headquarters, Mr. Bridenstine said his views had changed. As I fully believe and know that the climate change is changing, that the climate is changing. I also know that we human be beings are contributing to it in a major way. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. We're putting it into the atmosphere in volumes that we have not seen. And that greenhouse gas is warming the planet. That's absolutely happening and we are responsible for it, he says. Okay, that's going off on a tangent. But uh, if you were to look at volcano discovery and see how many volcanoes are erupting right now, are code red, and how many are spewing volcanic ash, there's over a hundred worldwide today, as, as I'm talking to you, over a hundred. And uh, for, some ha for some reason, there seems to be an uptick in volcanic activity. And uh, that usually happens in the solar minimum. We have more earth changes. We have more extreme weather, extreme cold, extreme heat, uh, extreme increase in earthquakes, and, and also in volcanic activity. In a recent podcast, Dr. Natalie Starkey and Neil deGrasse Tyson had concerning asteroid threats. They spoke about some asteroid facts. NASA estimates a football field-size asteroid collides with our planet once every 2,000 years or so. A car-sized asteroid hits, hit the, hits the Earth on average at least once a year. Some of the bigger space rocks in the asteroid belt can be as large as 583 miles across, which is like a small planet, actually. And as icy comets fly around the solar system, their outer layers sublimate in the sun's heat and leave behind the growing tail. So it was a fairly large, I guess, kind of double-decker bus, they said, that hit in Chelyabinsk, and that it didn't actually uh, take anyone's life, thank goodness, but it caused quite a lot of damage to, they say, over 7,000 buildings, and it had a very big sonic boom as it came through the atmosphere. And they said it actually blew windows, everything in Chelyabinsk town. We don't know, it was. we didn't even know it was coming because it was quite small. They say it was coming behind the sun. We didn't see it, we didn't spot it before it arrived. So yes, they happen, and if that had hit central London, I'm pretty close to central London. I'm pretty close to central London, she said, it's 60 miles across, maybe if you take greater London into account. Actually, that would be quite an issue if that had landed in the center of London, so it's sort of lucky that most of the planet is empty, and a lot of these asteroids tend to land in the ocean, so we don't see them, and they don't cause any harm. The scientists stressed asteroid strikes do occur all the time. The good news is the bigger the space rocks, the less frequently they hit Earth. And according to U.S. Space Agency NASA, a car-sized asteroid will strike somewhere on the planet once a year. And these space rocks are most likely to erupt into flame in the atmosphere and disintegrate before they hit the ground, thank goodness, to our atmosphere. Now, larger space rocks that threaten Earth's civilization only tend to strike once every few million years, they said. NASA said impact craters on Earth, the Moon, and other planets, Mars for example, are evidence of these occurrences. Any rock smaller than 82 feet across will most likely burn up without touching the ground, but as the 2013 Chelyabinsk incident shows, asteroids do not have to strike the ground to cause widespread damage. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse 
and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.